We got Lewis here taking photos. How you doing, bud? You know what? I'm doing it. We're having a good time. We're out here on the Appalachian Trail. This time I know that he set uh, higher goals for himself. And I think he's going to do it. I mean, that's Scott Jurek. You know, yeah. don't, don't bet against that guy. Yeah, never. <laughs> What'd you find there, Evergreen? A frog. There's a frog? <laughs> Look at him go. Frog. So I have a new friend here. I just woke up on a park bench and met this guy. What's your name? Uh, my name's Jabba, the real hiking Viking. I just yoked you up from the downtown, right, right <laughs> off the, the boards of the gazebo in town. You know, we threw you in the van. We said, shut up and don't tell anybody where you're going. Pulled you to the Appalachian Trail. <laughs> you're gonna run in and go get Sky. You're gonna pull him out. And that's it, man. We're just gonna make sure Scott's happy. That's your job because he needs energy, dude. That's what you help provide. You bring him to me, you bring him happy. He gets here, he's happy. We feed him, he's happy. He keeps moving forward. We're all happy. Forward, forward, forward. Help him think about nothing but moving forward. Yeah. Hi, Jenny, what's going on here? Hey, Doozer. Uh, well, we're waiting for Scott at the end of the 100 mile wilderness, which is has basically been like zero very hard to crew and he's had very little company so he'll be psyched to see some happy faces is this the trail is this the trail is this the trail white blazes, baby. White blazes. all right Lewis. see y'all we'll have later. a good one okay this is exciting my very first time on the appalachian trail and i get to go meet my buddy scott and run with him while he's attempting to accomplish a huge huge feat He's at the very beginning of the journey, but uh, he's gonna do it. And I'm really excited to be here. Even though I really didn't sleep last night, I flew in, got in at about 2.30 in the morning and uh, slept in a gazebo in a tiny town called Munson. And I'm already loving this trail, it's beautiful. All right, so these are the famous white blazes of the Appalachian Trail and we head into the green tunnel. Scott set off at about 5 a.m. this morning and he's been running south. I'm currently running north just to go meet him, say hi, give him a high five, brighten his spirits, and then we'll both run back to the crew at the parking lot and he'll keep on running and I'll just meet him throughout the week here and there, maybe about 20, 25 miles a day just to run with him, keep his spirits high, keep him moving, help him out with whatever he needs. That's my job this week. He's, he's getting some water right through the trees. You can see the blue. That's him. <laughs> I'm gonna surprise him. Hi there, have you seen Scott Jerk? <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, my man. How are you doing? I'm doing Good great. To Fancy to see you out here. Yeah, I know. You made it. <laughs> made it. <laughs> made it to Maine. I sure did. Yeah. You did too. What do you think of these trails? Man, they're rough. You were. You told me that they were a lot rougher than the boulder trails. You are right. <laughs> All right, Scott. So you're three days in. What, uh, what have you been running through? So I'm finishing up a piece here. Just a small 100 mile piece <laughs> um, called the main 100 mile wilderness it's a infamous part of the appalachian trail where there's really no road crossings like there's logging roads um out and back but it's one of the more rugged 
probably the most rugged section on AT and people come from all over the US and even the world to just come out here and experience it. It's pretty remote and it's got some pretty tough little mountains here and there. Yesterday I went over last night. I'm finishing up in the dark, went over a small little range called the Chairbacks. Just a little <laughs> just a little mountain just range. A little nasty section. I was like just jagged rocks, this ridge. Um, and they just go up and down, up and down. Um, but yeah, the 100 mile wilderness, it's a big chunk for through hikers because, you know, I've had a, I had a 22 mile section yesterday before logging road, but for most through hikers, they're coming into this, no access, resupply, anything like that. And for the AT, it's very unique. Ah. You know, the PCT, you've got other stuff, but for, the AT through hikers. It's definitely a, a daunting little section. So what does your average day look like? What, when do you start? When do you finish? Like, oh, this is, this is slippery here. Watch out. Yeah. Um, everything's slippery on the AT. <laughs> yeah. Notice that. <laughs> Typical day. I've been waking up at 4.30. Goal is to be on the trail five, which I've accomplished both mornings. Um, and, you know, I usually, lately there's been pieces, sometimes it's a short piece, but like today, you know, I'm doing 14 miles to start before I see my crew. So, especially in Maine, New Hampshire has that a bit too, where sections are pretty sizable before you see crew. Like yesterday I did a 22 mile section without seeing crew. So I'll, I'll see my crew anywhere from like two, three times a day right now because we're up in Maine and just not a lot of access. It gets a little bit better as we come down into Southern Maine, but, and then um, this is my day right here. <laughs> <laughs> Put one foot in front of the other. <laughs> this trying is Trying your... to maintain uh, for a lot of people out there. It's like, I know they're like, ah. Oh. That's slow, like, just try to get in a groove of three miles an hour, which over these trails, which you will soon see, uh, I know you just got a taste of it, but yeah, it's just, you go down to like two miles an hour yeah. and just slower because you're just like grabbing onto what they call out here, cedar birch or alder handrails, basically means small saplings, roots, anything you can hold on to, slide down rocks, just throw yourself to the next piece of rock that looks like you're not gonna wipe out on and grab a root, grab a tree branch. Yeah, it's um, it's rough stuff out here. So yeah, and then um, I usually, yesterday I did 44 miles, finished up the day around 9.30 p.m. I was hoping to be a little bit earlier so for today, I gotta get to the Kennebec River Crossing. So I got a fun little thing. It's one of the hallmark sections also of the AT besides 100 Mile Wilderness is crossing the Kennebec. And there's a ferry shuttle service, basically a gentleman, and I don't know his name, but he's been doing it for years. He shuttles people across the Kennebec because it's so big. What's that you hear, Scott? I hear a road. A road. It's the small things in life that bring excitement. That's a highway. Yeah. It means made progress. The crew is waiting for you. Getting somewhere. The crew and the kids. Yeah, it's first paved road I've crossed for over, I don't know, I think I'm up to 114 miles. And how long is the whole trail? <laughs> Those are things we don't mention. <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> 2193 to be exact. 2193. 114 down. You got this. Ooh, yeah, you can have some cookie. Yay! Yay! 
Okay. Now we can have some Papa's cookies. Get some cookies. Get some cookies, bud. Here, you guys hold them. Cookie. Okay. Right over that cookie. Is cookie. <laughs> Jenny, what's up next? Uh, six mile section, which is funny because we ran this section in 2015 together at night and things were like dire. And I feel the same. I feel like things are a little dire right now too because he's a little bit behind, but no worries, we're gonna get him going. Say bye to mom. What about Papa? What about Papa? Papa! <laughs> Give him a hug! So Scott and Jenny are finishing a six mile section here. We're just running out to meet him. You're known as the real hiking Viking on Instagram. Follow him. Correct. Why is that, man? I actually don't know for certain if I have any Scandinavian blood in me. You know, I'm not trying to appropriate Viking culture, <laughs> but uh, essentially when I was a Marine in the Marine Corps, you know, the army, they call themselves soldiers. The Navy, I, know they call them, I don't even know what they call themselves in the Navy. We don't care. <laughs> the point is, in the Marine Corps, we call ourselves warriors. We have a warrior ethos. And when I finished my first through hike on the AT, this same trail, I grew this majestic, glorious beard. It is nice. You know, and when I was deciding to get on social media and share my story, I was just trying to think of something that embodied everything that I was at the time. And I, being a warrior, I said, you know, what What rhymes with hiking? But Viking, and Vikings are warriors. That's right. Ah! Hey. Whoop, whoop. Hey, I know you. Yeah, yeah. High five, brother. Yeah. yeah. Good job, Jenny. Yeah. How was it, Jenny? It was good. Hot and sweaty Next and nitpicky. I kind of forgot. Feels good to be back, though. Yeah, how's your getting husband doing? He's great. He's just getting into his group. It's like, it's kind of deja vu a little bit, but I think physically and emotionally, he's um, he's more prepared this time. So he's just doing him. He's doing him. You know nobody else. So, yeah, it feels good. I feel very good about where he is how, how is it having the kids here um you know it's okay it's it's great having them here because back then they were just like a little twinkle in our eyes like they were like the hope the dream when we were doing this trail this was kind of all like all led up to having kids and so i feel like having them here it just brings it around full circle but it makes it like more special because there's just so much meaning on the trail for us and yeah. it's cool to have them out here but then sometimes I'm like oh should I be dragging them their poor little heads bobbing on these roads and stuff so <laughs> we're trying not to go in too much but just yeah. kind of so is, uh, see Scott every like maybe twice a day have fun have fun they're heading off on a 17 mile segment and then I will be there for the night run taking them home oh yeah <laughs> I'm not texting and driving. Don't go to my trunk and don't dump the bottle of water because you got an egg. It's about 7 p.m. Scott's coming in in about an hour. We're just getting pumped up for him. How we all doing? Uh, we're just oh, trying to so do our flus. <laughs> we're just doing it. We're doing it. She's been cooking these meals yeah. all day. I mean, not these. All of these. Look at that amazing <laughs> food. This looks like kids food, but this one looks beautiful. Vegan yumminess. Burritos. Burritos Galore. to go. What is this stuff? That's mashed potatoes with hemp seeds, so it has protein. Protein, and you're making it all right here? All right here. Look at I'm this. burning some burritos right now. Burn the burritos. Burning these burritos. Don't burn the burritos. Don't he doesn't burn like burn the burritos. burritos. This is so cool. And then we've got the hiking viking out here just jamming. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> Honey, can you plug and so it? Scott's going to come sit right here. We're gonna give him some food. We're gonna get him ready. Maybe somebody will massage him. And then, pew, down the road and up a mountain. Mark, 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 mark. Making new friends. I didn't know these people before I got here. I didn't know a lot of these people, but, but we love we're all weird. We love you. What are we listening to here? I have no idea, but I like it. Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, 
gonna work with okay. if you have any eggs. Awesome. Honey, grab yep. ice. You can. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna down this. Yeah. I'm getting loaded up here. I'm the mule. A mule carries all the stuff so Scott can run light. And so I've got lots of water and burritos and food and water filters and yeah. All right, see you guys. Scotty, good luck, dude. Woo! All right, let's do it. With my boy Scott, a little Friday night run. Let's get um, some rage going, dudes. Yeah. Oh, you want the rage back? Yeah. Here comes Scott Jerk! Good night, Scott. <laughs> Good night, Doozer. Looks cozy in here. Good work today. Thank you, man. Thanks for being out here. It's Absolutely. It is fun. Thanks. Buenos nachos. Okay, buenos nachos. nachos. <laughs> All right, it's finally time for bed. We just got Scott down. It's 11 p.m. He started at about 5 a.m. today, and that's kind of how it's going to go every day. This Today is day three. He's already had three very difficult days and running with him tonight I was I was just in awe I'm just so impressed by his tenacity because he is he's hurting he's in pain you know his body's not quite used to this grind and uh, you know he's a little bit older than the last time he did this and uh, things hurt and this terrain is nuts like he had told me that it was steep and rocky and rooty but man it's relentless out here and uh it's such an honor to be here you know along alongside scott and this whole crew and everybody's so awesome i mean this is a team effort you know we often think of running as a solo sport but uh something like this is definitely a, a team a team endeavor So, John, what's going to happen this morning? We're going to take a little boat ride. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Where are we? With Alex, with Mr. Alex here. We right. are on the Kennebec River, and we are headed across on the AT, headed south. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And you're the yeah. man getting in the boat and then running with him? I'm going to run with Scott in the next section across the river, and then um, I'll meet uh, Carl about uh, 12 miles out, yeah. and then we'll let Scotty do his thing again. All right. What kind yeah. of terrain are we looking at? It's not bad terrain. We're not. We don't have any big climbs on this other side, so it's going to be, should be a nice, a nice uh, 12 mile run. So mm. he's not going to do any major climbs, which is good. Good. Yeah. And how do we meet this guy who's going to take us across the river? You guys just stumbled into my driveway in the middle of the night, <laughs> <laughs> asking for directions. <laughs> uh, and, and now you're just trail magicking him across. That's the plan. Right when on. Goes around, comes around. Yeah, for sure. Right on, man. Good morning, Raven and Everine. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. What's <laughs> that thing on it? The brushy thing. Oh, it's like a little tripod. The Hi, Evs. How you doing, bud? Oh, mom, you woke him up. I did, and I never, never wake a sleeping baby is my rule, but. I didn't want them to miss this river crossing. How cool is it? It's so beautiful. Bop, bop. Go get him. I hear him. I hear him. How you feeling this morning, Scott? Pretty good. Right on. Pretty good. Legs are working. What truck are you playing with, buddy? Donkey. 
dump truck. That's the dump truck? Mm-hmm. You filling it full of dirt? That's the grater? Mm -hmm. It's to move stuff. It's to move stuff? Mm-hmm. And this is a steamroller. So that's the Appalachian Trail right there. And, and we and we are truck. hanging out here on the side of the road playing with trucks. We've got all the crew vehicles right here. And um, we're just waiting for Scott to come and then I'm gonna start running again. How are you feeling this morning? Oh, you know, <laughs> not bad considering, you know, it always feels good when you can get 24 miles or whatever it is, 25 miles and uh, yeah. by a little afternoon. Day four, I think it is. Day four. So far, you know, everything's going pretty well. You've done this before. Yeah, I was here in 2015, uh, first attempt. What year, how long ago was that? Six or seven years ago, something yeah. like that. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was much different. So, uh, less people, less infrastructure. Uh, it wasn't better or worse, it was just different. All right, so I am up next and we are going up the famous Bigelows. I'd never heard of them, but they are Big, check it out. This is my gut hook app, and we're gonna go up that mountain and then that mountain, and they are, as you can see, pretty big. <laughs> All right, it's time for a chest bump with the crew chief. Here we go. Boom! <laughs> all belly. Yeah, all, all belly. <laughs> How we doing, bud? How we doing today? I mean, I think today's going pretty well so far. Honestly, things have been. Things have been a little calmer. He's been, he, I think he was moving around 3.4 miles per hour today, which is quite frankly, leaps and bounds better than some other of the stretches he did before this. So things are encouraging. However, he got a big climb with you coming up. We're talking like 5,000 plus feet of climbing over the next 16.6 .6 miles. I mean, it's more, it's more than 5,000 feet of climbing. It's like the first climb is like 4,600 feet. And then it's still another eight miles to the end and there's still climbing involved. So it's a lot, it's the, it's the Bigelows. They're, they're his first true nasty alpine bumps since Katahdin. And how do, you, how do you get through hard stuff, hard times when you're down in the dumps physically, you're like trying to make your body move forward. What do you do? Where do you go? That's a good question. It's like, I wish I could tell you exactly where I go. Um, for me, it's like I search for any portals to just be like, I don't know, portals to the soul that just give me a little bit of, I don't know, hope. Because <laughs> I think that's hope is something that sometimes is hard to have and I think I often think of like family my mom is always a source of inspiration by Jenny and the kids um yeah and just try to be like you know what it's you know no one's making me do this <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm doing this to myself um you know and I love it but Let's be real, I mean, doing this kind of mileage every day, it's not just, it doesn't just get old, it's grueling, grinding, <laughs> just, and I think there's a lot of value in the, the tough, the tough times, the, tough, the hard things, and you, I don't know, so, so I attempt to remind myself, like, there is something, some kind of nourishment for this <laughs> bad tea that I'm freaking drinking out here <laughs> sometimes. Because there's probably moments where you're like, on this trip, you're like, why am I doing this again? Yeah, unfortunately, I've already thought that. <laughs> it's like <laughs> day four, and I'm just like, holy shit, it's like, I'm... Jenny and I were talking about this, like, I feel like this is a continue. You know how you when you have a dream and it's like, you feel like you pick up on that dream where you left off some other night? Yeah, for sure. I feel like, I feel like 
And Jenny said, oh, you mean a dream or a nightmare? I was like, well, <laughs> kind of both. Like, sometimes it's a surreal dream. Like, oh, wow, this is like wild. We're back out here again. And sometimes it's a freaking nightmare. Um, I don't mean that in this, like, oh, this is, it sucks. This is terrible. But it just, yeah, it's so hard. And I'm like, dang, I don't feel like I've left. It feels like I literally picked up where I left the trail six years ago. And Jenny's felt that on the other side. Like, she's not even running the mileage, but being out here, driving to the spots, being with the kids, watch them, I'm like, it's just, yeah, it's kind of wacky. Yeah, I mean, like I was saying earlier, it's, there is like, you know the things that are like emotional or tied into, oh, blueberries. I'm gonna pick some of these. What are these, blueberries? Heck yeah. Free food. Free micronutrients. I think it's, I mean, those are helpful, like offering up your suffering. I mean, it's kind of like, I think why when people, you know, they pray. I mean, I grew up Catholic and my grandma was always praying the rosary. And I, and I think that, you know, like prayer or intention, people do yoga, offer up their practice for the day for an intention. They have an intention with their practice. They offer that up. I think it's, you know, you have that intention and you offer sometimes, you know, where your suffering is going to go in orange, but um, yeah, reminded of like, I have the ability to move my body. Like, you know, and it's easy to be like, oh, you know, people have it so much rougher. There's always somebody who has it worse. But when you're out here suffering, you're like, you know what? Like, I can move my body. My mom spent most of her adult life in a wheelchair, not able to, we were by losing. And so, I know it's a reminder to me, sometimes, you know, my grandpa would do it. You can put yourself in a wheelchair, do the things you do, like you're getting new knees by the time you're 40. So, I made it to 47, no new knees, yeah, no new joints. Um, but, yeah, and then, Beyond all that, you know, emotional, then it's like, you know, it's the things like having a record. Like, there's no reason, like, I mean, why the hell would I learn to do this if I didn't have a carrot hanging out there? And that's, I think I mentioned this when we were out like late last night. Nobody's paying me a million dollars, but I'm putting a carrot out there of like, I wanna break this record. I wanna like, get my record back. It seems like there's so much more I can learn this time around. And I think that's why, yes, on the surface. Whoa, look at that, he even he's stops the, to fix Karen's. upper body. <laughs> mid run, uh, mid sentence. Uh, um, <laughs> but it's, don't tell Carl he just did that. <laughs> or your wife. <laughs> like, what the hell are you doing? Why are you wasting time? Why are you wasting energy? That's like calories and time that you're putting forward down the trail. But, but you give them back. That's the whole purpose. Yeah. Well, so yeah, I think, you know, you've got to find, I, I guess everyone out there like. Let me just jump in front here real quick. Audio is better. Yeah. Right. People have to find, you know, those goals or those carrots for themselves. Those, those triggers to get you out of bed in the morning. Yeah, you know, for some people, you know, including myself, like, you know, it's easy to get down. Life can throw shit at you and you're like, how do you motivate yourself just to even getting out of bed? And like, so I think doing these things, you really have to find what's gonna get you out of bed in the morning and do another 50 miles. And what's gonna, like last time around, never thought I had to go to the places that I had to go and just how much sleep deprivation, how much struggle, toil. There's so many things that happen out here and it's a struggle, you know, to, to do this. So yeah, you have to find the things that are gonna motivate you. And for me, it's 
know, a record looming out there or something like that. Like putting that goal and holding yourself accountable to that is super powerful. Yeah. Like I'm going back to a, you know, a primal state of just survival out here. Like just doing what animals and humans used to do. And it's pretty, yeah, pretty amazing to just tune all that out and just, okay, I just need to put one foot in front of the other. And that's, I know, I say it's a gift, I don't know. <laughs> it is. <laughs> It is. Just like this steep part right here is a gift. Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> So like all these were placed. Yeah. It's like hardcore trail work. Looks like we're going up a creek bed. This is crazy. A lot of rocks. You're, Doozer, you're not in Boulder, Colorado anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. These are the Rocky Mountains. Appalachia. One of the oldest mountain ranges in the world. You can tell these rocks are ancient. Taller than Mount Everest at one point. Taller than the Himalaya. Yeah, buddy. Yep. Look at him go. Man. Getting up there. <laughs> what do you think of this? It's amazing. Remember it quite well, but sure gives you a taste of what Maine's like, look at all the lakes. Now it's raining. That happened pretty fast. That spoiled our little celebration. We need to get off the mountain because there's no tree cover. <sighs> That's okay. It's nice warm Maine rain. So check this out. This is a box spring here. And I've been filling up the water. There's a little filter on top of this, squeezing, filling up these bottles. Scott went up ahead and I'm just kind of making sure we have enough water for the rest of the evening. We still have about almost 10 miles to go. We've done, we've done a lot of up and a little bit more up and then down. But this water is as fresh as it gets and it is super cold. All right, so it's dinner time on the AT. What you got there, bud? It's a little frozen burrito. How many calories do you eat a day? Uh, Seven, eight thousand plus. Is it hard in these small towns to find vegan nutrition? Oh yeah, I mean ask Jenny. She would tell you. So making it, so I have some help this year making food. We have a microwave in the van. Some things we didn't have before. Jenny didn't have time to make, but she made smoothies, so doing a lot of smoothies out here. Every day I have at least one. Um, 
because you can pack a lot of calories in those. Been doing Thai food, curry. Um, Mexican. Vegan rice burritos. Ice cream? You know, did have some ice cream popsicles yesterday. Um, and yeah, I think tonight ice cream should be on the docket. This is the trail. This is the trail. That is nuts. It's a little bit steep on this backside here. What'd you find, Scott? Trail magic. Trail Look magic? Cold. Look at that. Cola is cold. Somebody put cold sodas in the creek for people. How cool is that? Look at that. I haven't had a cherry coke in a long time. We are about a half a mile from the car. And uh, yeah, I've been out for seven and a half hours. Scott's been out since five in the morning. It's 9.30 p.m. We're almost done. The final steps are always exciting, but hard. And uh, yeah, we went up and down some big old Bigelows. Yeah, doing, buddy. How's it going, man? It's going. Yeah. Good job, Scott. That was not flat. No. Well, <laughs> it's as best as I can do for you. you know? I know. Well, it was it wasn't the Here we are. This is where you are. This is your climb. Yep. Unreliable source. Unreliable source. Reliable source in. 4.2. 4 yeah. 4.2, all right. Mm -hmm. This first initial climb to the top of, um, I believe it's North Crocker. Yeah. All right, have a good morning, bud. Oh, yeah. We'll see you, you know up there what? later. You know what? Go get them. Whoop, whoop. What are you eating? So, wow, uh, there's a nutritional Pop Tart. It's different than the regular store brand, it's nutritional. Oh, it's good for you. Hypoallergenic. <laughs> yeah, it's hypoallergenic. You can run them through the dishwasher and still eat them. <laughs> so this guy right here, Carl, has his own shoe, and I've been wearing the Speed Goats for two years, and I love them. But he also has his own sock. Check it out. This is the Speed Goat sock. Ooh. He's kind of a big deal. We've got Carl over here picking out all the treats, huh? Picking out the treats. These aren't my treats. These are Scott's treats. <laughs> yeah. He loves them. He loves them. He loves these things. Thank you, Cliff Bar. Yeah. So, is there a method to your picking out snacks? 240 calories per hour. That's that's the number. So, I have no idea how much those sandwiches have in them, but they look pretty big. I'm calling at 350. So, you just kind of do the math. Scott's always come back with extra food, so you can always go a little lighter to think. You know, burritos, vegetables, beans. I don't know how his body handles it, but. When you were on the AT, what were you eating? Beer and candy. That's what they told me. I was eating beer and candy. That's what the New York Times said. And now I'm making vegan sandwiches with mayonnaise that have been on there for a couple of days. I take it you're not a vegan. <laughs> no, I'm not vegan. The food can taste very good. I'm not against that, but. Yeah, I'm not a vegan. Where's the steak? I think we're having hot dogs and hamburgers tonight. I heard last time you were taking uh, chicken on the trail with you. Yeah, with chicken tenders, you know, chicken tenders were awesome. I always had all kinds of scraps like that. I did always have a little bit of candy just to munch on. Another good thing to, to munch on is sunflower seeds. Fill your pocket, keep you occupied, yeah. you know. Right yeah, on. I just do stuff like that. And my, I just basically have my crew fill a pouch. So I had a small pouch in the front. They filled it with food, I picked it up and left, and what they fed me was what they fed me. I ate it, because I was hungry all the time. <laughs> so what are you working on in here? I'm making some boiled potatoes. Oh yeah? Yeah. Apparently what? it's a lovely snack with some salt and some vegan butter or coconut oil, uh, olive oil, just a little carb punch for the for the trip. What have you mostly been making for? Uh, <clears throat> I think it's favorite thing I've made was coconut cream curry. I've also been doing a lot of rice and beans, um, like burrito-y type things, um, pasta with vegan meatballs, pretty much anything I can add 
nice hearty fats too. Some uh, smoothies with blended nuts and fruit. Uh, anything we can load up on the on the protein, fats, and carbs to keep him fueled. What's in this cooler? All of his pre-mades and all of the vegetables and fruits we will need to fuel our athlete. And ice cream. And ice cream. Yeah. We'll get it. I'm gonna carry this extra sandwiches burrito and then this other burrito Kate made. Okay. So I've got lots of food for you. 25 miles to go, roughly 6,300 feet of gain. All right. To get over, to get over to the other road. To get to route, main yeah. route four. Have fun out there, brother. My first day of school. I know, it feels like <laughs> you look great. You got your backpack all packed. Well, the other kids like me. And then lunch. Go hey. get them. Go get them, Scott. Super helpful. Yeah, woo, woo. Yeah. Cool. Love you. Have a All right, love you, baby. You're gonna be fine. You didn't want to kiss. Um, I don't want to kiss. I don't hey, want to kiss. Hey, come here. No, don't do it. <laughs> See you, man. Okay, you're it. No. <laughs> Are we playing freeze tag? No, I want you. Are we playing freeze tag? Oh, I'm it. Okay, turn around then. Better start running. <laughs> I'm coming. And this is how we pass the time when Scott's out running all day. Evergreen, what are we doing? Going into the spooky forest. Ooh, what's in there, Evergreen? Ghost, Ghost and, and dragon. dragon. Ghost and dragon? <sighs> okay, let's go. I'm following you. There's no scary stuff in here, okay? There's no scary stuff? No. Well, that's good. Comes in the tracks. Are you looking for ghost tracks? Yeah, and dragon tracks. Give me your hand, buddy. It's we water. don't need you getting injured. It's water. It's water, okay. So they're changing colors. I know. And they're mind colors. Watch out for that big spider web. How you doing, bud? How's it going, man? Good to see you. Hey, what's up? Been a while. You doing well? 12 hours. Almost on the dot. It started out as a knot, and what's really weird is it was this. It was starting here like a knot yesterday on this one when Doozer and I were running, and then I started, you know, doing more with this side. So I was like, okay, and all oh, right, that's kind of what happened last time. Yeah, it's kind of like just this in the muscle belly. Okay. Carl's got the Sierra Nevadas. <laughs> right. Congrats. That's my old favorite. Have any sort of um, definitive what's happening? I was thinking here. What is it? We found vegan pizza. What do you think? Amazing. So we are camped out in a parking lot. And everybody's pretty whooped. <laughs> Even though I didn't run today. I thought I was going to run, but... Uh, just that one huge section that Tom and Scott did took up the whole day. They left at 9.30 in the morning. We're back at about 9 p.m. And I think uh, Scott's hurting a bit, his, his legs, his quads. I'm going to get up early in the morning and, and head out with him and uh, get a nice, strong start to the day. And hopefully he's feeling better because he just went to bed uh, just dejected, kind of down. But, uh, you know. It's the beginning of the adventure. Long way to go. He's going to do it. I have faith. I'm proud of him. It's pretty incredible to watch him do this. Yeah, but now, this morning, you're going from Route 4 to here, which is the height of Maine. So, 12 miles, 13 almost. I guess it's closer to 13. Rough morning. It's been better. <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, I've got some kind of quadricep muscle strain that decided to pop up yesterday, late morning. 
and just progressively got worse and worse um, all day made things super painful and then it didn't help I climbed descended over 9,000 feet yesterday or 10,000 feet over 32 miles so Whew. yeah it's um trying to walk it off this first stretch see if it'll break free a little bit but it's been super painful so <clears throat> what does it feel like uh like somebody sticking a knife into the quad because <laughs> i like uh, downhills are worse i'm able to walk at least in the flat downhills i feel like yeah, literally have to use my poles as crutches. Yeah, it's definitely got like some strain, tear, torn, micro tearing that's pretty significant. I'm in a tough spot mentally right now. Hard not to think negatively. But I'm trying to I'm trying to stay positive, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what can I do to keep moving? Hills never look that good on camera, dudes. You don't really get the full effect. This one looks great. <laughs> your butt looks great too. <sighs> Keep flexing your butt. We talked about this the other day, but like in this moment, you're in a lot of pain. What keeps you moving forward now? Like, how do you get through this? Um, I don't know. I like right now I'm kind of in survival mode in terms of being in so much pain. Like it's different when I think your, your mind is having a hard time being in it. Like what we were talking about last time was more like, you know, how do you stay into it? When it's things are like this, I feel like I'm, I don't know. It's, it's like something even beyond, even though it is so much psychological, but when you have a significant injury pain going on, it's just kind of like, okay. I gotta like grit my teeth, grimace, and just survive. So, yeah, it's kinda, I wish you could have. Howdy, Hello. how's it going? Hey, good, how are you? Good. Coming from Georgia? Yeah. Nice, almost done. Hope to be there soon. <laughs> yeah, way to go. Have a great day. You too, what's your trail name? Simba. All right, Simba, get it. That probably helps you a little bit, seeing people. Yeah, I mean, it, it helps sometimes, but then, you know, you go right back to the pain. <laughs> so yeah, right now I'm just trying to survive. See if I can get this thing healing itself while I still walk on it. Cause that's the biggest like tipping point of like, okay, how much can you move on it? What can you do to keep moving down the trail? Are you making it worse? Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm starting to contemplate now. Oh, should I take it easy? Should I take part of a day? You know, and that's, it's not really an option. Not an option if you want to break the record. Uh, no. Hmm. That's where the conundrum lies. 
definitely will, uh, I mean, you can see the difference between the two. Yeah. Oh man, I feel so bad for you. Uh, uh. Wish I could implant your legs, Deezer. I know, I wish I could just give you these. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. I always pull out the camera when I see something hard because I'm like, I'm going to film Scott suffer now. <laughs> it's like great content. <laughs> great content. Watch Scott suffer. But he's cruising. You're doing all right. I wouldn't say cruising. Yeah. Yeah, Scott. Woo! On a level of one to ten, where are you at on the pain, pain scale? Uh, when walking downhill, I'd have to say nine. Damn. It's like. Come on, quad, get it together. So Jenny just. Jenny just joined us. What's up, Jenny? Oh, you know, just trying to find you guys, extract you out of the funk. Smile, everybody smile. <laughs> you smiled, I saw it. <laughs> you're making me laugh. <laughs> so, Jenny, yes. what tactics are you using to pump up your husband right now? Oh, I'm just, you know, staying positive and also using all the things he tells other people to do. <laughs> all of that pep talk he tells what does he tell people he tells people you always have another gear you always have more to give you just dig deep and find that extra well that hidden well he tells people all that stuff and it's because you know he's done it but i think right now when he's in it it's hard to remember what you're capable of but um i just know that he has a long journey ahead of him and it's gonna get better because it never always gets worse so you're feeling confident yeah at least confident that he's gonna have an amazing trip even if it starts out like this <laughs> um yeah i just feel like this is why we're here and this is what he was coming for looking for the whole the edge finding the edge like the transformative thoughts that you know propel your mind to push your body and he's really he excels at that and i feel like he's always so hungry for that and this is like the perfect place to tap into it how are you doing how are you doing? Reese, did Reese save some special treats for you? Ooh. The plan is get off my leg, try to get some healing going on this thing. Because hiking on it did not make any sense. Um, or hiking more. So, unfortunately, it's uh. Yeah, it's a little rough right now. So, uh, yeah, gonna go into town, um, try to get fixed up. If there was a miracle worker in town, that'd be awesome. But We'll, we'll call one up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but get this thing healed up and get back at it tomorrow morning, hopefully. I don't know. Let's see. What are you doing, Abs? You're oh. taking care of mosquito bites? <laughs> yeah, you got I mean, does this thing work? I don't know. I I got Instagram marketed. I was like, yeah, I'm getting that. Taking care of those bug bites. 
What about your? Who knows? Uh, yeah, I wish. What about you know, your she ailment? Could have a suction device that could just like. Yeah, maybe she's just just yeah. suction out all the inflammation. Okay. Just. Well, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh. It's okay. You can do. You can do. No. What are you looking at? What's a what big pumpkin toe. A big pumpkin, and then what's it doing? It's, it's, it's got a eating a donut. <laughs> Does it have a blister? No. Underneath it? Oh, yeah. Uh, what's the plan right now? The plan is to do some uh, testing the things out tomorrow. And we're going to see if it'll come around. So, going to get some uh, rest tonight. Ice it again here in a second. So, I've been icing it and then... Doing the Norma Tech pneumatic compression stuff. See if it'll turn around. Mm -hmm. So, is the family love uh, beneficial to all this? <laughs> of course. Yeah, it's good to be around them um, for sure. They um, they kind of have no idea the kids, anyways. But so they just think, yeah, Papa's hanging out. Um, so yeah, it's it's good to spend time with them for sure. But it's also, there's a reality of things, too, that weigh in pretty heavy to figure things out. So, yeah, it's like getting a dose of <laughs> regular life, which, you know, is pretty, pretty sweet, pretty tempting to just uh, so let's go back to regular. Hey, we're doing an interview over here, buddy. Why are you being so loud? <laughs> you take care of your dad tonight, okay? Yeah. Can you do that? Thank you for my GoPro. Is this your GoPro? Uh, yeah. No, it's not. It's my GoPro. No, he has. Alright, well, I'll let you get so to bed with bed the kids. Time. Yeah, I'll bedtime. Maybe I'll be the earliest I've gone to bed in a while. Yeah. Can you say good night? Good night, poo. <laughs> good night, poo poo. Good night, Jenny. Good night, too, sir. We'll, we'll see you in the morning, everybody. <laughs> 24 hours later, bud. How we doing? Um, a little bit better. Um, you know, mentally, it's uh, there's a readjustment of things, but um, I'm hoping that my quad will give me something today more than it did yesterday but just gotta see you gotta give it a shot um, guess that's where things are at um, hi raven how are you guys doing good you know it's a new day it's gonna go not cloudy we can see the views feeling pretty good papa seems to be feeling better more like himself but you know, we'll see. Today will we'll be the decider, right? How was the? Uh, did y'all sleep last night? Yeah, and I, you know, it comforts me to hear him snoring. He was out like a log, just resting, and he seems a lot better. He seems like himself, just more mentally, a little sharper. So we'll see. How about you? Um, Are you well rested? <laughs> I am well rested, yeah, but just kind of. You know, lots of different feelings and yeah. thoughts in my head. Like, I don't want him to do anything the the that would damage <laughs> himself, but also I don't want him to give up because I know well, if we went back home and he's sitting on the couch, he would not be able to look himself in the mirror <laughs> right now. You know, there's, I just want him to feel good about it. So, yeah. that's the hard part. I believe in magic. <laughs> Do you believe in magic? I believe in it. Tickle season. <laughs> Are you tickle trying to season. tickle me? You can't tickle me while I'm filming. <laughs> yes, I can. I can tickle me if I want. You crazy guy. Tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> What's this? Lot of cash. Did you get to use it? It is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for sure. You guys are here. Okay, talk. All right, boys. Go get them. Woo! Have a good day. We love you. Woo! Play today smart, baby. Jenny, what was the last thing you said to Scott just now? 
I said make us proud and not because we're not proud of him but I want to see an effort I don't want to see he's already uh, kind of crestfallen you know I want him to um, just remember why he came just because he loves being out here period he loves it so there's nothing you know to be sad about to like regret like I just I want him to enjoy the sacrifice that everybody's made to get him here to let him do his thing so that's what I meant by that <laughs> I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Have my GoPro back. You want the GoPro back? Okay. Here you go. Then <laughs> I got the treasure. You got the treasure? Yeah. <laughs> Kind of like a worn wear pop-up with Patagonia. They graciously supplied some awesome repair, everything you could possibly want. Zippers, Velcro, fabric, um, to, uh, you know, zipper pulls, Just pliers, to fix hikers' just broken to stuff. Fix, yeah, to fix, do um, repairs on the trail for the hikers. So I'm trying to like make myself useful as I wait for Scott this time. And, and it's a great way to interact with the hikers. It's a really, it's a little bit of trail magic, I think, that I can give for all the people that came out and gave us trail magic. It's kind of a good way to give back. I started sewing at a really young age. My mom taught me. She used to sew all of our clothes and our doll clothes. So it's something I grew up doing. And then I went to design school and I really honed my sewing skills. And then I been a designer an outdoor designer for many, many years now. Um, and so it's kind of my wheelhouse. All right, so I am gonna hike back a few miles and meet up with Scott and Luis. And I have some warm vegan pizza pockets in my backpack and some new water. I don't know exactly what he needs, if he's even hungry but I figure he'll be happy to see an energetic face and some new food and water, so. All right, I found him. There he is. The hobbling, the hobbling mess of the AT. Ugh. How's today been, my man? Uh, started slightly up, you know? Feeling like, okay, a little less pain than yesterday. Feeling like I could do some, but as soon as I start going downhill, it's just like, pretty much like yesterday. Maybe a little less, but pretty excruciating. But, you know, trying to really just, I had to give it an honest effort. See, see where things are at. But right now, like, I mean, my muscle is like grating. My quad is like, sounds like there's paper being torn inside, or I don't know, it doesn't have an audible sound. <laughs> I don't know if a, a sense of touch can have a sound. <laughs> <laughs> Take me back a few months. How long have you been preparing for this? And your body was in pretty good shape, right? No, I was in great shape. I feel like I was the strongest um, I've been in a long time. I mean, I've tried to prepare my body for the demands of just the wear and tear that it was gonna encounter. So way more like strengthening and just doing a lot of plyometrics and really stressing the muscles for durability factor, which is what a lot of this is, but did a lot of hard training in the foothills of Boulder instead of up high where it's all pretty and where I'd rather be. Um, not to say the foothills aren't pretty in Boulder, but um, when it's 90 degrees and it was humid this late spring, early summer. Um, yeah, just was feeling really good, getting a lot of big climbs. That's one thing being in the Boulder foothills. Could replicate these like 2,500 foot climbs, 3,000 foot climbs that were super steep, technical. And um, 
yeah, I felt like I was ready, but you know, it's, it's tricky. It's hard to prepare your body for terrain like this and to do 320 to 350 miles of this a week. <laughs> I'm kind of, kind of on a march of defeat right now, I feel like. Definitely sucks, you know, but you know, it's like one of those things I have to face. Um, it's reality of the situation. So I think going on a walk with a buddy like Luis, um, not talking for bits, just processing. So it's been good for me to be out here, not just to test things physically, but kind of sort out my crap mentally because it's not looking good right now. It's cool. it's still a lot of fun. I think that's yeah. that's what adventures are. They're they're grueling. They're a grind, but at the end of the day, there will still be a lot of fondness and great memories of the <laughs> struggles and <laughs> rough patches or I don't know, rough days it seems like. <laughs> it looks like I'm hobbling on crutches with my trekking poles. You doing a puzzle, buddy? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What is it? Fire truck. This goes right. How you doing? We're good. Yeah, right. so it's been what, two weeks? Feels like two months, but I guess has it been two weeks? Yeah, I guess it's been a couple. I may might even be longer than that. Seems like. Yeah. But, um, how's, yeah. your, how's your leg? It's uh, it's coming along. It definitely. I definitely feel like I totally overextended it because <laughs> it definitely took a while for it to uh, recover. So it's a good sign, I guess. It would have been a bummer if like it felt better after two three days. So um, yeah, definitely. Finally, feel like I can bend it you know, closer to like its normal range and putting uh, more weight on it. Yeah. So jogged after the kids today. So yeah, things are coming back but slowly. But he still hasn't run at all. I mean, he's, I'm always trying to get him to run with me and he's like, no, I don't know. And it was crazy because when we first got back, he couldn't even ride the electric bike. So he was just kind of hobbling along, but it seems like it's gotten a lot better in the last week. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it, you know, and that's where, okay, I knew the last couple of days that I was trying to, you know, see like, okay, will it give me anything? Will it bounce back a little bit? Um, that probably wasn't the greatest thing, but it's temporary damage um, that'll repair itself, but it definitely caused the recovery to, to be pronounced. Yeah. So. so if things were going the way you had hoped, you would still be out there right now today <clears throat> how I mean obviously it's a bummer and but your leg is healing how are you doing you know this is that's this is a hard thing to come to terms with I mean it is tough because it's especially unpacking and dealing with all the loose ends and just um, yeah it's it's been great in terms of the um, you know processing things and going through what has to happen in terms of I guess a loss, so to speak, or coming up uh, pretty short, and then the reminders of that makes it a little bit more <laughs> extra painful in terms of like, oh yeah, I should be out in Virginia right now, or you know, I'd be at this point, and you know, I'd still have you know two weeks out on the trail, which is hard to believe because yeah, like Jenny said, it sometimes seems like oh yeah, we've been back forever. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those things for me, like it's. I know it comes with the territory, but it still doesn't make it easier. We're missing one piece. Oh, sorry. Do you want him in the background? We're we could put him. <laughs> That's fine. Hey, buddy. We're missing one piece. We are. Are you sure? Yeah, there's a piece. That's one more piece. Why am I missing there? Mental preparation, physical preparation, and then to have it just like cut so short. And I think that's what probably stings the most um, for everybody is that we thought we would. But it happens, it's just, it happens yeah. in, okay, MCs, oh. It happens in expeditions and big climbs. It just, all this planning 
and you have to do the planning and then it just kind of sucks afterwards but we're we're fine we're just yeah. getting through it piece by piece doozer so you know it was only seven days um and we've talked a lot about the stuff that was hard and the stuff that hurts but what were the what was the best part of this what what were the good moments out there well, I'd have to say, like, starting the trail was, I don't know, it was just really one of those moments in life that was pretty, pretty magical. And it really felt like we were picking up where we left off last time. So I'd say that, that to me was pretty special. And the fact that Jenny got to come up and the kids um, were sleeping down below and somebody watching them, like, it, it just made it. Like, oh, it was just Jenny and I on the top of this mountain. And the last time we were there, we were finishing the AT. And it was like this, you know, huge amount of emotion because it was like a continuation of that, that experience. Um, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, that's definitely a highlight for me, too, was we were hiking up Katana and we left at like 4 a.m. And... It was when you kind of got to the ridge, it was all cold and misty, and we were in this thick cloud. And then when we got to the top, you could kind of see the silhouette of the sign. And then when we finally, like when he touched the sign, like the clouds just dispersed, and all of a sudden it was just this wild orange glow on the summit. Nobody else was there. It was so powerful and so emotional. I couldn't, I like was very surprised that it just, it like knocked the wind out of me. I was so just astounded by the emotions and feelings that came back. And it was, it was very, I'm not like an emotional person, but I really was speechless. So I feel like that moment just everything kind of came together for me in that moment of like wow last time we were here was such a different experience we we're in such a different place in our lives and like to be there our kids sleeping to be together to have like six years pass from that it felt like we had done so much and the trail meant that trail the ending was like the completion of that trip but it was the start like the continuation of our life, I guess. It just, I don't know, everything just felt like it closed the circle, but then it continued in the circle. It was, there was just a lot of meaning in, for me. Yeah. And it's in 2015, dream. when you finished, kids were the dream at that point. Yeah. And they, they were here this time. Yeah. They were just like a twinkle in our eye, just a wish out there in the universe. And it had been like a four year struggle for us. And then now to have two kids and to bring them along with us, it was amazing. And half a decade, over half a decade had passed since then. So like a lot of life had occurred. Um, but at the same time, it felt like it was just yesterday. Like it's kind of like, I think when you have one of those dreams that you pick up on another night that you're sleeping, and it felt like that where it was just like, oh, I just picked up on that dream that I had that was maybe, you know, days or weeks ago, just that's what it felt like where we we're just like right back there. And that's, I mean, that made it as much as I, <laughs> that just seems like pretty um, abrupt to say, oh yeah, that little piece was like the most important or made it worth it. Yeah. Um, it did just that. I mean, of course, yeah, we're bummed about everything else, but that was, um, that was definitely a highlight. And like in a lot of ways, pretty worth it just to be back there because I mean getting back to Katahdin and getting back to that area was something that just hard to to fit into just in terms of like going there and um, hiking up that mountain so we probably wouldn't have done it otherwise so until the, some point maybe when the kids are old enough to hike it themselves the kids are pretty small um, but what do you hope they might remember from this experience with mom and dad out on the trail I mean I know because I was with the kids the whole time I know they'll remember just being out in the woods and jumping in the lakes with you, Doozer, and waiting at the trail, like climbing on rocks. Like, I know that they'll have this totally um, visceral ex memories of um, the textures, the smells, the sounds, the bug bites, like the humidity 
Um, I know that they'll remember all that, but what I, like, cerebrally, I guess, like, later I want them to remember that, that at least their dad went back to do something. You know, it was kind of this big, crazy goal, but at least he tried. Like, he always... I knew he always wanted to go back because he always felt like we didn't give it our best go the first time. So it's like a ton of effort to go back, but I don't know. I think it just speaks a lot to Scott and his personality um, to keep believing in himself, to keep pursuing dreams, like no matter what, even with two kids who don't sleep and or who don't let us sleep, you know, just to keep always getting after it, I guess, and not letting go of, of his personal goals, I guess. I think that's that, you know, having that adventurous spirit, I guess that's, that's what bad. we want to do is like, I mean, if there was like a goal, like, or a, a side goal to this, obviously it was something I wanted to do, but a, a side benefit of bringing the kids, even that was a ton of work for Jenny and it just adds a whole nother layer of things, but just seeing them at moments along the trail or at night when we camped, they, they could see that, okay, they don't understand maybe what I'm doing completely. Even though like Raven though, from even photos she remembers, you know, parts of video footage from the 2015 trip, she like knows like, oh, and Papa and Mama were on the AT. And she does like have a sense of that. And then she actually went out there and experienced it. I think that's pretty special and she'll probably remember that. But if anything, I think it's just having that adventurous spirit. And I guess that's what is most fun. Like, do they have to do something like the Appalachian Trail? You know, <laughs> probably, who knows? They might not want to do anything like we do. Um, but just being able to see and witness that and, you know, have this love for being out in the woods, out in the mountains, even if they're getting bit by bugs and even if there's leeches in the lakes and all these like things that people like be like deterred from going back again out on these things. And I think that's a big part of it is like I, in a lot of ways, maybe I should have been deterred to go back because I knew how hard it was. I knew the risks. I knew, you know, it could potentially end the way that it did. But I feel like we still have to honor that desire to, to go back, not only to the hard places, but the amazing places out there. And there were so many great moments out there. Like, you know, Jenny was saying, even when the kids were just hearing stories, how they were just out running a little bit onto the trail and like checking things out, catching frogs. I mean, that's, I think that's the, the beauty of things is like noticing those little moments. And the same for me when I was struggling out there. I know a, a lot of times it seemed like when I was with you um, those last couple of days or when you came out, like I was in a lot of pain, you know, kind of just hating life, but there still were like, magical moments out there and there were times where like oh look at that you know fog rolling in over that lake or look at this vista or view I mean you still can enjoy even though it was like a terrible amount of pain so I think that's that's the beauty of it too because I think Raven and Evergreen don't probably understand how much pain I was in they just like oh yeah you know Papa's back <laughs> hanging out in the van and now we're gonna go on a road trip back home um, and I think that's that's something we learn from kids is that they just can flip the switch and be like, oh, we're doing this. And like, oh, let's let's go here. Like, they don't internalize yeah. things. There was like no time emotions. to sulk and like feel bad because it was all of a sudden, oh, family road trip. Let's go. Who are we going to visit? Where are we going to stop? Like, who wants to go potty? Like, we just fully had to just, you know, roll with it, be in the moment. You know, I, get, I think the lesson too is like, you know, life goes on and you've got to you know, you still can process things, still go through those like tough stages mentally and psychologically, but the reality is, you know, I've got to be ready to go for the kids and Jenny and family stuff and back into work and all those things. So that's what's kind of daunting. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of daunting, would you ever want to go for this again? Um, well, I don't know if that's a great question to ask. I mean, it's a great question. Everybody wants to know. It's, it's a, it's a, he's like, I mean, it's a great question. Um, yeah, check back with me. I think it's really, the, uh, it's like, uh, to be continued in terms of like asking me that question. But, um, I mean, there's obviously there's going to be desire to go back. I mean, when things happen this way, but, um, at this point in my career, do I go back to the Appalachian Trail or do I try something different? I think that's maybe... 
a better question and that's that's hard because yeah there's definitely a pull to go back um but at the same time it's like it's hard too because maybe i should just let, let it be in terms of um doing that so yeah it's it's hard i mean will i go back and if i had the opportunity to i mean yeah it's an amazing trail it's an amazing experience even though like yeah it's got a bitter taste maybe now and it stings a bit um I know at some point it's going to feel right and I'll want to go back or do I do something different? Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... She already I didn't, said no comment. <laughs> I didn't want to go back to this. I felt like we had this amazing experience, the two of us. It was like our spiritual journey thingy and we accomplished what we wanted to. You know, maybe not... We didn't do everything the most efficient way but we did it still so I didn't want to go back and like you know um change change the story a little bit but I knew it wasn't about me it was about him and that he felt like personally he wanted to do he still felt like he left some days on the table and and I totally respect that I get that that's that's like his mentality. It's not my mentality. I'm like, I'm good. It's like he studies things. He breaks it down in his head. He looks at like where he can do better. And I know that's that's just what like makes him tick. So I feel like he's probably gonna go back because now he's gotta go clean up his mess. He's gotta go. <laughs> he's gotta right his wrong. <laughs> just kidding. She's a hard ass. Uh, <laughs> now I was like, well, you opened up that can of worms. You gotta go put him back. So I feel like, again, we learned a lot, and um, it's just a matter of like we had so much support. We had a crew. We had people dedicating so much time. You know, you came out and Louis. It's hard to get all those people to come to come back again so i feel like if we did go back it would just be another like ragtag team of us and whoever stragglers we got your back <laughs> yeah okay okay Dizzle, yeah, Dizzle I mean, signed up i got that <laughs> on video yeah and it's hard to even think about like that yeah. piece yeah. of like the organizing and because yeah right now it's like we're still picking up just the pieces so i'm mean, still unpacking bins of crap bins it's like of just like okay yeah shoes and socks a constant and reminder of just how much it takes we'll just the... keep them packed up i'm telling you just rent <laughs> keep them packed <laughs> keep them packed yeah i love it yeah well i appreciate you inviting me it was an honor and uh you know, I think everybody else became a family out there. So for, on behalf of the crew, we loved the experience. Well, thanks. I mean, that's what is fun about this, too, is that you do bring together people that have never hung out together. They're not friends. And all of a sudden, you throw them into this pot, and they have to start working together. And, um, yeah, different personalities collide and, you know, just ways of operating and that's that's fun too what's cool is that every single person from 2015 once they found out we were doing it, they're like sign me up a hundred percent jenny started getting the emails the, the text emails, like, we have even met them now. Just, even people were like i met you in virginia at this section remember we'll come out everybody wanted to come back and i feel like that really speaks a lot to scott and to our experience the first time is that he's always so kind and gracious and appreciative and People had a great time, and they felt. I feel like that's why so many people came out because they wanted to be a part of this, whatever it was. This energy they wanted to like touch the energy. I mean, it was it was amazing the outpouring of support that we got the second time of people being like, "It was so cool to see you go back." And so, I feel like it's just you know reiterates all the things that we did right the first time was just taking it all in taking the people in you know trying to be a part of the community and um and trying to enjoy it just like all the hikers and the trail towns and the, the people who came out it was awesome so i mean even the through hikers that i did meet out on the trail this time they're like I remember, you know, 2015, some people were out doing a section hike or they were just out, um, you know, finishing up like a section that they hadn't done, but they're like, I was out there or I had, you know, I remember I missed you. Like, so there were those, even in the short amount of time, I mean, I say short, it was 250 miles or so. Like that's, it really wasn't short. I was out there for a while, but it seemed short in terms of like what we were planning to do. But so many people were, 
yeah, it was it was fun to see that where people were just like shocked to see me out there again, and you know maybe I was shocked myself that I was back out there too at times. <laughs> All right, I think we need to help somebody with a, a puzzle. Do you need help, buddy? You need a puzzle. Did you, puzzle? Did you help, finish buddy? that one? Did you finish oh. that one? Oh, he just barked his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I finished. I you mean, finished it. You finished the puzzle. Good job, Good job. buddy. He got a haircut. Oh. His natty dreads. You were my favorite guy out there, Evs. <laughs> That's you. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> High five, buddy. Yeah. Good job, Jenny.